<laughs> Ashley Nicole Voss. So I, I look at you and it doesn't look like you've been crying. Uh, it doesn't look like you've had any sleepless nights. How are you processing and dealing with the loss of your quarterback? It's not great. It's so funny that Instagram picture because last season I posted a picture before week one or before the game started week one and we played the Bucks last year as well, which is a different conversation. And we ended up losing. And it was a Ezekiel Elliott jersey last season and somebody photoshopped an L instead of a 21 on the jersey <laughs> and a photo went that. viral. That's right. And here I am again, the same team, same situation, except a lot worse. It's um, it's very, it's gut-wrenching. It's it's disappointing. It's it's devastating, not even just as a fan, but Dak Prescott, I mean, it's so hard to root against him. Everything that he's persevered through, he's the nicest guy. He's so polite, so charismatic. Even if you're not a Cowboys fan, it's hard to dislike him. Um, so it's just, it sucks to just see him have to fight back from another injury and I think that when you're a Cowboys fan obviously it hurts even more because you were already apprehensive going into the season right you were already apprehensive going into this game because we look drastically different offensively than we did last year um so you held out hope but you were also expecting for the worst but this I think exceeded everybody's you know preparation for the worst this is just a very very bad situation all right, and you mentioned last year, and, and uh, first of all, that game last year, I remember it vividly. And there was a point we in the close. game I said, "Well, we were close." <laughs> oh, I know. Not only that, I think there was a situation. Maybe it was fourth. I, okay, maybe it's not so vivid. I don't remember vividly. I know it was fourth down, and I thought the Cowboys should have gone for it. They kept yes. the field goal instead. Yes. Tom Brady gets the ball. They come down, they lose. I'm like, wait a minute, if you're going to play against Tom Brady, you're going to have to go for touchdowns. Go for it on fourth down. They, they were moving the ball. Like, yeah. Dak was incredible in that game. What did he throw incredible. for? Like, incredible. 400, 400 yards. And it was, his, was, first, it was his first, that was his first game back from injury. And it's right. just, it's such a weird, poetic, you know, type of storyline that now he's facing that same team that he was this close to beating last season where he came back from injury and now he's injured. Now he's facing an injury after facing that same team. He almost beat fresh off of one. It's just, it's, you can't write, you can't make this stuff up. It's, it's insane. How did you feel about, uh, and I don't think I've really talked to you about this. We just, we just saw the news happen and we just kept going forward without any commentary. You mentioned last year, Yes, they did have CeeDee Lamb, but they also mm. had Amari Cooper. And when they trade Cooper to the Browns, just like, hey, CeeDee Lamb is ready for the number one spot. Did you, I know, I know it's only one game, but did you agree with that decision at the time? And if you did, are you now <laughs> changing your mind on how you felt about it? I didn't agree with it at all. Here's the thing. If you're going to go ahead and trade a wide receiver at the caliber of Amari Cooper, then your game plan should be to be able to bring somebody in who's of that same caliber it's one thing if you don't feel like he fits in your scheme and you want a different with receiver of that same standard but you didn't really get any better at the receiving core you just move a guy who honestly is not ready to be your number one option yet into that number one option but everybody surrounding him is not better than what you lost so i just didn't understand the rationale Obviously, Gallup is not back yet. He's expected to be back week four, week five. That's still not enough. And then on top of that, with all of the veteran receivers that are out there that you can get for the vet minimum, Jerry Jones not going after one of them is just an asinine decision to me. I don't understand the rationale. I don't understand the blueprint. You have Odell Beckham. You have Antonio Brown. You have some other guys out there that's not going to cost you like an absorbent amount of money. Like I said, you can sign them for the vet minimum, but it's going to make a drastic difference in your offense because what happened, and I tweeted this a few weeks ago before the season even started, What's going to happen with not getting a veteran receiver is exactly what ended up happening. CeeDee Lamb got locked up every single time. You know, Dak had the ball in his hand. The offensive line is not good enough to protect um, Dak long enough for him to get a pass off. Even if he could get a pass off, if your number one option isn't available, you can't really trust the other guys. They're just not there yet. So he's scrambling on every play. You have to exhaust your run game. 
that's eventually going to go ahead and become weary and not work throughout four quarters of football. Anybody could see the writing on the wall if you've been watching football longer than a year. Well, listen, I'm not even a Cowboys fan, Ashley. And I told Michael Smith yesterday, I said, well, you know, given the division that they play in and given the talent that's on the roster, I still think they have a talented roster. Uh, they could they could have a winning record or a 500 record without Dak. And that's a non Cowboys fan saying that and you sound like you disagree with me. I, I'm listening to you and I'm ready to say they can't win. Pack it up. Season's over. That's what it sounds I mean, like any, you're saying. Any, any, anything is possible in the NFC East. We call it the NFL's reality show, right? You can never really count out anything being a possibility in the NFC East. But here's my issue. If I had the offense that I had last season with my backup quarterback of Cooper Rush, I would say absolutely, because the defense is good enough to keep you in every single game. But the offense, I mean, Cooper Rush is not a miracle worker. If Dak Prescott couldn't go ahead and score more than three points with this offense. What makes you think your backup quarterback is going to be Tough any defense. more successful Bucks. in doing that? It's the just the weapons aren't there. Tough opponent. Tough opponent, too. Now, you got to keep that in mind. They played at a, at now with a defensive-minded head coach. Think about it. Last year, Bruce Arians, you know, no risk it, no biscuit. They, right. they, they're not really a, a, a defensive-minded coach, a team, starting with the head coach they are now with Todd Bowles. Excuse me. I think it's just a different vibe with Tampa. It's not going to be tough sledding like this every week for the Cowboys. I mean, you'll obviously you'll have some games, especially those, you know, division games that are going to be a little bit easier because the Giants, you know, are going to are not the best team. They're going through a lot of changes. The Commanders, you know, also going through a lot of changes. Philly looks good, but they did go ahead and give up a substantial lead against the Detroit Lions in week one. So again, yeah. anything is possible in the NFC East, but you have to also look at some of the other opponents. You're looking at the Packers, the Vikings, I mean, the Titans, you can't really sleep on them. The Lions seem mm. to be able to fight back and put up a yeah. fight. You know, you have Justin Fields and the Bears, you have the Rams. I mean, yeah. there are winnable, there are winnable games within the schedule yes. and especially winnable games before Dak Prescott would be able to return. Um, it's just a matter of the schemes that you put your backup quarterback in for him to be successful because unless you're going to go out and get the offensive weapons that they drastically need, you know, you're going to be in the same predicament, maybe even worse with your backup quarterback. But here's my, you know, my other side of that. It's great. So let's say you go 500. Dak Prescott comes back to what? The same offense that he struggled with in week yes. one. The team needs to hey, be listen. adjusted. If you go five, if, if you go 500 and he comes back to that offense, that offense is good enough then. Okay, we went 500 without you, Dak, and you are uh, an elite quarterback. So you take us, uh, your backup was able to take us here. So you take us a bit further. Well, I mean, not every single game you're playing Tom Brady, though. Let's go ahead and, and put that out there. And Brady didn't look his best but you're not playing the Bucks every single week. So if they are able to go 500, and I really don't think that's a possibility. I don't mm. think they're going 500 before Dak Prescott comes back. I think if Dak comes back, he's going to have to dig them out of a semi-deep hole. Um, I just don't, my concern is him coming back to a situation that's the same. Now, if they go out in the next few weeks and get a veteran wide receiver and some O linemen that are kind of floating around and go ahead and help make this offense winnable to a degree, then yeah, when Dak kids back, he's going to be in a great situation. But if it's the exact same team, I don't, I don't know how you fix that. I mean, I see people talking about get Jimmy Garoppolo. I mean, Jimmy Garoppolo is not God. He's not a miracle worker. He can't even make this offense, you know, go ahead and turn that into something. You have to look at what he came out of from the 49ers. That's a drastically well-constructed offense where he literally only has to do just enough to go ahead and help them win. He gets to Dallas. He's going to have to do a lot more than just enough. That's how badly constructed this offense is. Hey, thanks for watching Brother from Another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave and be sure to watch us 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern Time on Peacock. Appreciate you.